What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is the review slash recap of Gladiator 2 in theaters now. Now, this takes place about 16 years after our beloved Maximus died, and we're going to be following along our main character of Lucius. Now, he has a long way to go to get to his end goal. And also, I like to say, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, this film is in theaters right now. I go from start to finish on this recap. So if you haven't seen it, take a step back. If you have seen it, I think we can agree that this film probably isn't as good as we were expecting it to be. I mean, I went in there with no expectations. And also, this is a disclaimer before you get in there and I see you start commenting. I call him Macrinus instead of Macrinus for a reason because he's very cringe in my opinion. So I'm calling him Macrinus throughout the whole thing. So don't comment on that. I know and I did that on purpose. But before we jump into this and break this down, if you like movie recaps, reviews, breakdowns, hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of Gladiator 2 in theaters now. Starting the movie off, we see Lucius and his wife getting prepared for battle because it's an ongoing thing in the Gladiator series that the Romans, they're always on go. They're always trying to conquer something. And we know that's what they were doing in real life, trying to take over as much land as possible and expand their rule. Now, they're putting on the armor, but they aren't putting on full body armor, just armor over their chest. Off in the distance, we see the Romans pulling up, commanded by General Marcus. Now, they have a whole fleet of ships. They have arrows. They're playing the drums, making sure that the rowers are on. Hee-ho, hee-ho. Full steam ahead, headed straight to where Lucius is at. Now, the thing is, this is the last free city in Africa, and the Romans, they want it for their empire. General Marcus and his fleet, they hit land, and the clash begins. Swords, shields, arrows, everything is going on right now. You don't even know who's on your side. You're just swinging and praying to stay alive. But General Marcus looks up, and he sees Lucius' wife, and he tells them to aim at her, and she catches an arrow straight through the chest and falls off the side of the fort into the water. R.I.P. Lucius sees that General Marcus told them to do this, he runs over there and tries to fight with him, but ultimately they end up whooping him also and knocking him over the wall and into the water where he sees his wife with an arrow in her chest just floating in the water. But he also has a flashback back in the time. The Romans capture Lucius and his people, and this is how they become gladiators because they're slaves and they got to fight for their freedom. But while they're being carried off to Rome, we see young Lucius when he's a kid. Now, whenever people would come into the town, young Lucius would have to go on the run. If you remember at the end of the original Gladiator, the reason he's been missing this long is because they had to send him off. They've been after him ever since, and it's been about 16 years. Upon arrival back to Rome, General Marcus, he comes back with all the slaves that they got, the Gladiators, and we get introduced to the two emperors. And what they're saying is, since you came back, you conquered that last free village in Africa, we're going to have some gladiator games here in celebration of you. That's how they celebrate it. We go to the Colosseum. We see some gladiators go at it. And this is a good ass Sunday evening. Watching somebody fight to the death. We get introduced to Macrinus. Now, he is a real person in real life, an African emperor from Algeria. But here he's putting together an army of gladiators. And he's actually at this little area watching these up-and-coming gladiators fight so he can buy them and take them back to Rome. Now, Macrinus is looking up there, looking for the cream of the crop in these gladiators, and he looks down, and they have these rare baboons I've never seen in my life. They're skinless. They're out here, and, well, they're attacking. They're going crazy. But Lucius, he's on all four, sizing them up, and he's actually taking on the biggest one. He chokes it out and finishes off this baboon, and you hear Macrinus say, I'll buy that one right there. I'll definitely take him. He's a fighter. I can get some money in Rome off watching him fight. Before Macrinus is going to buy Lucius, he knows that he can whoop on an ape. He has his assistant go over there because Lucius isn't talking. Macrinus wants to know, is this because you can't speak or you don't want to speak? But nonetheless, none of this matters. We want to know if you can fight. We know you can beat up an ape, but can you beat up a human? Now, Macrinus' bodyguard goes over there. Punches him a couple times, but again, Lucius, he comes out 
the victor because he's not just going to get punched on. After the fight, Macrina sees that Lucius is the real deal and he sees something special. So he has him come into his room. And when he's talking to him, he's saying violence. Yeah, you may not do a lot of talking, but I see that you can fight. Now, he asks Lucius, what exactly do you want? What are you trying to get out of all of this? Because I'm going to definitely have you come and fight. And what does Lucius say? He said he wants the general, General Marcus, the one that killed his wife. So if you take him to Rome, that's all I want. Whatever I got to do to get at the general. Once they get into Rome, Macrinius, we find out that one day he likes men, one day he likes women, but there's nothing more that he likes than making money. So he's like, hey, once we get here, is it normal that, you know, your guests, they make wagers on these different bouts that are about to go on inside of the Colosseum? He also knows what Lucius' end goal is, too, to get the general. But we'll find out more about Macrinius a little later on and what his actual agenda is. Of course, this wager, it leads to another fight. Now, they bring in this big, stout guy. Lucius is standing there, and they're saying, well, you have to fight this gentleman here. But Lucius is saying, let's not fight to the death. We don't have to do that to entertain him. But this guy comes in, he doesn't do any talking. And once someone attacks Lucius, we know he's going to fight back. And unfortunately for this guy, <laughs> this is Gladiator too. Lucius survives this movie. He wins again. Behind the scenes, we see General Marcus, Lucilla, and all of the Senate sitting out here. Now, they're trying to do a coup, and what they're going to try to do is backdoor the emperors at the gladiator games. They're going to wait for these gladiators to be in there fighting. They're going to bring in their army. Then they're going to attack, get rid of the emperors and anyone else. They're going to have to pay for all of their wrongdoings. And in this, will make Lucilla back the empress of Rome. Now, you know Lucilla. That is the mother who was messing, well, involved with Maximus before he left. And we know that that is Lucius' mother. But of course, these two, they don't know about each other. But General Marcus, because he won't be able to become the emperor, he's saying, we take them out. We'll give you back the power. Once they arrive to the Colosseum, they line up all the gladiators and tell them, y'all getting ready to go fight to the death. But on the wall, we see a, a wall of honor. But there's one name that appears to be crossed out. We can't get close enough to see who it is. But everyone else's name is up there. The people that died with honor. Before the games start and the gladiators come out to entertain us, the two emperors, of course, they walk out. But then what do they do? They tell General Marcus to come up and they give a standing ovation. And he also gives a speech to the people out there. We went and conquered these lands. I'm no emperor. I'm no politician. I'm just doing as the land needs us. In Rome, this one is for you. But now, sit on down in the back and let's get the games going. Before the battle starts, everyone is in the ring waiting for the undefeated champ to come out on a rhino. And we look over at Lucius. He puts his sword in the ground, takes a knee, and he reaches for the dirt beneath his feet, puts it in his hands to get a good feel. And it's kind of reminiscent of maximus in the original gladiator now when you look up in the booth you see lucilla looking and she's saying this looks very very familiar also lucius knocks the undefeated champion off the back of the rhino the rhino's horn is cracked they get into hand-to-hand -hand combat it's going down we don't know who's going to win but then we see the champion standing up with a sword looking at the emperors to see if they're going to give mercy on this man lucilla is in the back she's saying mercy the emperor says mercy. But what do you hear? Lucius says, I'd rather die. I'd rather die than get mercy from the Romans. That's how dedicated he is. And then he ends up stabbing this guy through the chest and cutting his head off with two swords. After the battle, we see Lucius go in here and he's talking to the doctor. Now, the doctor, he's like a historian. He used to be a gladiator himself. He's been in the ring. He knows what it takes. And he's like, and we all know this, the medical advancement wasn't as where it is today. And most people were dying, not from the actual injury, but from the wound not being treated in an infection. Now, you remember that wall of fame that we were talking about, Honor? Well, the name that was chiseled out was Maximus. And he's looking, he's like, Maximus. Man, I met him one time. Now, he's not saying that this is his father. 
He just telling the doctor that I met him one time. He was a cool gentleman, reserved, powerful, wouldn't back down to nobody, not even the Romans. And that's why Lucius acts the same way. Macrinus and Lucilla, they meet up. Now, this is after we just seen Lucius take out the undefeated champion. Now, they sit down and Macrinus tells her we met each other before because I used to serve with your father back in the day. Good gentleman. But let's stop all the small talk. Lucilla's asking, what is he exactly doing with these gladiators? And of course, he's making some money. And he tells her that these gladiators, they can fight for their freedom. And that's because she checked her little book and it's starting to come to her. She's seen this gentleman reach down, grab the dirt, just like Maximus did. And now this has Macrinus a little suspicious. Why is she asking about one of these just random gladiators? So Macrinus leaves talking to Lucilla about this random gladiator, Lucius, and he goes and talks to someone that has a lot of information. He's saying, Lucilla, everyone knows she had a child, but no one knows what happened to this child. So he's putting two and two together. She's putting two and two together. And of course, we know Macrinus, he's an emperor. He came up here. He's trying to make some money, but he also promised Lucius, I'll get you the general who is married to Lucilla because that's what you want. You just got to make me some money. Lucilla sneaks out and she goes down to where the gladiators are being held. And she goes to Lucius' cell. When she gets in there, he looks at her and he tells her to get out of here. And she's like, no, I'm your mother. But she doesn't outright say that. They bring up Maximus and he's saying, whoever your son is, he's gone. He's no longer around. He's changed. But he's talking about himself. And he knows that this is his mother. He's piecing it together. She's piecing it together. But for him, he's like, you left me. You made me run off. And now you're married to the guy that killed my wife. And I'm here to take out General Marcus. So she needs to get out of here because, of course, she is royalty. She's not supposed to be down here. But she snuck out. And at least she talked to him face to face. Now, for those that actually watched it, I've been to the Coliseum. And it is true that they could flood it. There are pipes that come from the aqueducts where they reroute the water in the city to the Colosseum and they could flood it and they could have these type of battles, the maritime battles where they use actual boats. Now, they've been training for this for a couple of days and well, now it's on. The architecture of the Colosseum, you must see it. I'm sorry. You know I love to travel and I just had to point that out because seeing it in person and seeing how they recreated it on here, this is almost one-to-one, to be honest. Now, the two ships are going back-to-back. One has arrows. They're shooting their archers. People getting hit. They falling in the water. Now, in this water, there's sharks also. Now, I don't know if they had imported sharks or anything. We know about the lions and tigers and bears and elephants and rhinos. That's true. Now, sharks, I don't know about that. But they're going at it. They ram through one of the boats. Boom, knock it in half, and now it's hand-to-hand combat. Everyone's going at it because you know this is a fight to the death unless you get a little bit of mercy. But when it's this big 50 versus 50, there's no mercy. While all of this is going on, it's chaotic. People are getting hit, thrown off the boat. Sharks are out here attacking people. We see Lucius, he gets free, and he picks up a crossbow, and he aims that crossbow up. And who is he aiming at? The general. Well, he ends up getting hit, and it knocks him off just a little bit. And when he shoots off the arrow, it goes in between the two emperors. So at that point, the emperors are telling everybody, hey, get up, get out of here, because it's out of control. They almost got hit by a random arrow, but it wasn't too random. It was going for the general. It's just Lucius got knocked off his spot. After the gladiators finish competing, Lucius and his crew, they win. Another dub for the good guys. After this, Macrinus, he leaves. And what he's going to do is talk to this gentleman who knows about everything that's going down in Rome. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out without him knowing. But what he does is tell Macrinus about the coup. Remember, General Marcus was saying, Lucilla, we're going to go ahead and at the last game, get all the emperors and everyone in the Senate that did bad and make them pay for their wrongdoings. So now Macrinus has a little bit of information about what the general is doing. And of course, you got to use that as leverage to get what you want in life. The information Macrinus got, he went straight to work with it. He told the emperors about this coup. 
And well, that night when the general was trying to sneak up on him and get the coalition together, they shot down everyone and brought him in. And now they're getting ready to unalive him. But they want it to be a public death. They want everyone to know that he traded on Rome. And Macrinus, of course, he's always thinking ahead how he can leverage this for himself. He tells the emperors, as a friend, you should let the gods decide what you do with them. This is just stalling to buy some time. Well, the next day is here. Hmm. They got Lucilla chained up so she can watch, but she can't go anywhere. They got the general down in the middle of the Colosseum. Everyone is about to witness this. Now, if he can fight his way out of it, of course, you know, you can go on about your life if you can fight your way out. The battle that we've been waiting on. General takes out the first couple of people. And before they can unalive him, Lucius runs out. He's like, wait, let me get him. And this is what we've been waiting on. All you hear is shing, shing, sword, sword, pow, block, block, piss. Oh, pow, damn, bing, pow. They going at it. I'm talking about they rumbling. I said, okay, this is a good fight scene. I'll give him that. They going at it. But his wife was unalive because of him. You've been married to my mama. So there's a lot of pent up anger here. And Lucius is not playing. Now, while they're going at it, out of nowhere, we see the general take a step back and raise his hand. This means he's surrendering. And at this point, the only way we can decide what's going to happen next to him is on the gods. So right now, everyone's sitting back. Macrinus is up here. He's watching. Everyone is just looking. What are the guys going to say? Mercy, no mercy. Unalive, keep alive. What's next? The general tries to talk his way out. He tells Lucius, I loved your mother. Your father, I would have died for him. So right when you think Lucius is about to unalive him because the God said no mercy, he doesn't do it. But now the emperor is upset with both of them and he tells the archers, archers, kill them. So all the archers around the Colosseum, they're drawing down and aiming at him, getting ready to fire off unlimited arrows. The archers, they let loose. They catch the general in the back several times. Ah, oh, man, this armor ain't as thick as we thought it was. Man, they take him out. But he goes out with honor. That's the only thing you can say in the Coliseum is you went out fighting. Of course, now the whole crowd, they're starting to get restless. They're starting to turn on the emperor. They are upset. Macrinus is telling the emperors, we need to get back to the palace for our own safety. The archers got arrows drawn. Now, you know, it takes a second to reload them arrows. They need to get some weapons out because these arrows aren't going to hold anyone back. Maybe the first line of people. But other than that, oh, it's going to get ugly. Now, if you watch the two emperors, the whole movie, you see that the younger one, he liked to see blood. He never wanted any mercy. Well, while they're back in the palace, they're trying to figure out what exactly went wrong. Why didn't the gladiator show no mercy? Why didn't we just unalive him the night before like we wanted to? And the younger one. Emperor Gator, he cuts his hand. And now they're like, wait, 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 stop. Macrinus has to actually help out and get rid of them. But he didn't go as expected. We were thinking he was about to get rid of Emperor Gator. No, 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 no. Macrinus has always had a plan up his sleeve. And he's eliminating people one by one because he really wants that power. Now, Macrinus did all of this because he has a plan. He's trying to gain power of Rome. Well, Emperor Gator, what does he do? He actually gives the military power to his pet monkey. He's saying Citizen Dondas is in charge of the military. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think a monkey can talk to tell us what we need to do, let alone it's a monkey, guys. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on here, but everyone's looking thinking what are we doing? What is this? Now that he's second in charge, you remember what happened. He helped out. He helped one emperor get rid of the other. And he had that head in his bag. So you can literally say he has Rome in the palm of his hands. Macrinus, he has a plan to take over. But emperor can't be in charge unless Lucilla's gone. 
And down below, we see Lucius getting all the other gladiators together because now we're about to fight for our freedom. This is our last fight, fellas. And it's either you stay here, go back in your cell, or you go upstairs and you fight. Fight like you never fought before. And of course, everyone's listening to Lucius because he's been doing his thing all movie long. And they're about to follow a real gladiator into real battle. Everyone goes down there. They start fighting because this is what we're doing. We're trying to survive. Lucius actually goes over to where Maximus gear was. He puts all of it on, takes the weapon. He goes up there. They're fighting. Now, remember, Lucilla is tied up. And we already know that Lucilla has to be unalive so the emperor can take over. Well, Macronus, he hasn't been playing that game, right? What does he do? He shoots Lucilla straight through the chest with an arrow because he's trying to speed up the process. Now, Lucius sees this, and he has to chase after him because him and his mother may not be on good terms, but that's still his mother. And now we get the fight that we never knew that we need. We thought that he was helping Lucius out the whole time. They going at it. Swinging the sword so hard, it hits the stone, it breaks. They ride off on horses. They chasing after each other. But this showdown is just now getting started. But remember, only one person can survive this. Because this is Gladiator. These two end up fighting. They fall in the water. One sword swing knocks off his hand. The next one right across the gut. And well... R.I.P. Lucius is the one standing tall at the end of this battle. But he's proven himself this whole movie. And the last thing we see is Lucius standing tall in front of everybody, letting them know Rome is now ours. He went from defending the last free city in Africa on the coast to having Rome in the palm of his hands, doing something that Maximus wasn't able to achieve, but the next generation could. And that's where we end Gladiator 2. All right, let me know what you think about Gladiator. It was two and a half hours. It obviously wasn't as good as the first one. It was kind of copy and paste. To me personally, it took a long time to build up. It was like the first 40 minutes was fairly slow. They did have good fight scenes, but it seemed like all of them were very quick. It wasn't no intense fight or anything. But I mean, that's Gladiator 2. I didn't really expect much going into this film, but I, I, I like it. I give it a seven, a seven out of 10. I think that's feasible for this. Let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. If there are other movies that you'd like for me to break down, comment them below. Also hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.